Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Seven of Jamaica's 19 police divisions are under states of emergency. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 17th November 2021. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, now, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery mat. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. This should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. The people of Jamaica share mixed reviews over government's decision to declare states of emergency in seven of the island's 19 police divisions. More in this television Jamaica news item with Oshin Masters. Once again, the effectiveness of the states of emergency is being brought to the fore. On Sunday, Prime Minister Andrew Honis announced the imposition of the measure across seven police divisions in a bid to cauterize the island's high crime rate. Security expert Robert Finzi-Smith believes that the current measure will not have the desired effect. As before the Prime Minister made the announcement, persons on social media were already speaking about the imposition of a security measure. He says there's no doubt that criminal elements heard about the SOEs before they were declared. Another concern was the decision intelligence-based. Who are we targeting? How many people have we fully identified as producers of violence and that we can put a name and an antecedent to? Because if we know definitively who we are looking for, then their departure from the areas targeted could work to our advantage. For another security expert, Jason Mackay, he believes the detention mechanism under the SOE will be instrumental in holding on to criminal elements. Well, that's a significantly effective mechanism. If you look on Jamaica's crime history, they had a suppression, a, a suppression of crime act that it is commonly known that was removed in 1994. It, it was after that that crime statistics and crime control in general started to plot the period because a detention act where you can just arrest without having to face the court within 48 hours is a significantly powerful tool. So I, I guarantee you that that, that, that that type of power will is very effective. In other news, tourist arrivals in Antigua and Barbuda are predicted to increase significantly going into the beginning of 2022. Raghib Aparicio of ABS News has this report. Tourism Minister Honorable Charles Fernandez provided that update to ABS. He speaks to the occupancy rates at Jumbi Bay Island Resort. They said that the hotel is um, almost full and uh, it's looking very, very good uh, going through the season. Also on the horizon is an increase in air traffic from one of the country's primary tourist markets, the United Kingdom. We also got a ramp up in December. We will come back to 10 flights a week. Uh, Virgin, we met with them this week here. They're going to ramp up a bit. They're doing three flights a week. Um, we have a new airline coming in, Frontier, on the 4th, 4th of December. In the cruise sector, the country is expected to exceed projections for calls to port. We had anticipated that they're going to be about 80 something calls. Uh, there's one and two that has changed. So it's creeping up slightly, and December is going to be even more robust than November. Right, so the numbers are growing and we should end up with roughly close to 90. On Sunday, 
three cruise vessels were docked at Heritage Key and Nevis Pier, a record since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Reynolds says that number will also be eclipsed in December. There are going to be a day, I think it's December the 14th, where we're going to have four or five vessels. And by the way, and that's not counting that there are going to be days when they have the berths are going to be filled and also Falmouth. Rakib Aparis reporting for ABS News. St. Lucia's Ministry of Health has reported an overall decrease in COVID-19 transmission rates, but officials are still concerned about an increase in large crowds, particularly on weekends. Don Nicholas of DBS News World reports. From July 25th, 2021, the Ministry of Health recorded 7,208 cases at an average of 69 cases per day and carried out over 31,600 tests. 50% of the cases are between the ages of 25 to 49 years, with 56% being female. Most of the cases are coming from the Castries, Viewfort, and Babano districts. The ministry is also managing the outbreak at the Bodily Correctional Facility, where 27 inmates were admitted to the respiratory hospital with one person in critical condition. As of Tuesday, 170 COVID-19 deaths have been recorded during the fourth wave, with males accounting for 56% of the cases. The Ministry of Health is still concerned about increased social activity, especially on the weekends. As indicated earlier, we have at present 309 active cases in country. This is above the required threshold indicator of 100 or less cases targeted. Based on the forecast and anticipated trends, this should have been reached a week ago. Over the last three weeks, we note the increase in social activities and large crowd activities contributing to the increased cases. The chief medical officer highlighted the need to sustain the gains achieved in the management of the fourth wave in light of the increased transmissibility of the Delta variant circulating. We recommend a gradual transition into the high-risk services to ensure they are implemented in a sustainable way. We are working to prevent further spikes during the festive season. The ministry continues to appeal for public cooperation in observing the COVID-19 protocols to prevent any further spikes. For the DBS News World, I am Don Nicholas. <laughs> strong winds, rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The Trinidad and Tobago Medical Association says it's concerned about reports that local doctors have been prescribing ivermectin for COVID patients, but admits there's not much it can do on this front. The association is also expressing concern over what it says is a stigma in the population causing people not to want to get tested or be admitted to COVID-19 hospitals. TV6's Renessa Cutting reports. The Trinidad and Tobago Medical Association is calling on medical doctors to stick with the science. Following reports from the Ministry of Health that doctors have been prescribing ivermectin for COVID-positive people to the detriment of their patients. I can't dictate to them how to practice medicine. And we encourage them to continue to practice medicine under the principle of evidence-based medicine. That is what we would encourage. The association president is offering the same guidance where it concerns the use of alternative or traditional bush medicine. The evidence before us is not significant enough for us to be convinced that these are more beneficial than harmful. And while in some instances it doesn't actually cause harm to the patient, what we are saying is that we practice evidence-based medicine. The association is, however, supporting vaccination as one useful tool in the fight against COVID-19. 
It's also calling on persons who have developed flu-like symptoms not to delay seeking testing and medical intervention, something the association president describes as a frightening trend. There's still a stigma of being diagnosed with COVID, and many people are still a stigma of ending up in one of those hospitals because many patients think that if I end up in one of those COVID hospitals, I'm not going to make it out there alive. So when things deteriorate at home, they hesitate to call the ambulance, they hesitate to go to the hospital, they believe that they can fight it out at home. But that is a major, dangerous precedent. Just last week, the Ministry of Health reported that three such persons who initially refused hospitalization eventually met their demise. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. The Barbados government has sought to assure the nation that it is not excluding any players within the tourism sector. This Barbados Today News item has more details. According to Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins, efforts are ongoing to build an all-inclusive sector. Her comments come on the heels of complaints leveled by taxi operators who took to social media to lament that despite the return of cruise ships at the Bridgetown port, large tour operators were the only ones benefiting from the business and small taxi operators were being shut out. Addressing a ceremony to welcome the inaugural visit of the Holland American Line cruise ship Rotterdam this morning, Cummins insisted this was not the case. Whether it is in air or it is in sea, we want to ensure that those 40,000 workers directly and those 35,000 workers indirectly in all segments of the market have an opportunity to benefit and to regain their lives and their livelihoods as a direct consequence of the work that we are doing. It is for naught if we are able to bring all of these passengers and they fill hotel rooms but they're not able to have authentic local experiences that benefit them and their families in a real and a meaningful way. And we are hopeful that in the coming weeks, the discussions with the cruise lines and with our partners will allow for that broad-based engagement and that inclusive approach to tourism that we as a people believe in, we as a government are committed to, and myself and Minister Humphrey in our respective roles will lead the way in ensuring that it comes to fruition. Cummins got the support of her colleague, Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy, Kurt Humphrey, who echoed that talks are ongoing to ensure all players benefit. It's important that we make sure that the bubble is safe. I know, Minister Cummins, that the PTMI did a lot of work to make sure that our taxi associations, whether it's the independent or the co-op, are in a position to offer safe tours. Um, we hope that when we present or continue to present the safety that we believe are associated with these taxi associations that you too would allow the guests to find favor with them uh, to spread the work in Barbados. Because in this country, the, the principles on which we are built in relation to the environment, but it's also in relation to people. And I have a strong belief that that is the same principle by which you abide. So we will continue those conversations. We trust that as we go forward, we'll be able to make progress on these very important matters. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, now, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.